This Arsenal defence against that Manchester City attack, how worried should Arsenal fans be? Very, because it's, it doesn't matter if it's that Manchester City attack, or this Manchester City attack, or that Southampton attack, or that Norwich City attack. Anybody who plays against Manchester City or against Arsenal, they have an opportunity to score goals because, well, Arsenal cannot defend. They cannot defend in 1v1 situations. They get stretched out of the midfield, so they, they provide space in transition as well. And so, however you want to look at it, if you, can't get, if you cannot get close to people defensively in the midfield, and then you cannot de defend 1v1 situations, and you're unwilling to drop off into a defensive shape where you say, okay, fine, you have the ball over there, and we're just going to sit tight here behind the ball, you're unwilling to do that as well because, well, we are also and we're going to play with the ball. All right, well, you don't have the personal to do that and you don't want to defend and you don't want to compete and this is what you need to do in order to defend, then good luck. And if it is against uh, the best version of Manchester City, which, to be fair, we haven't seen all that often, but if indeed they show up and offensively they are what they are, then Arsenal has no chance. City seven points now behind Leicester. It could have been more, but Leicester were held at home. And Arsenal, that kind of mid-table mediocrity right now. But being fair, to Arsenal, that Arsenal attack against this City defence. How big a concern for Pep because this City defence hasn't looked good. That Arsenal <laughs> attack against this City defence or that Liverpool or that whoever, whoever plays against this City defence has an opportunity because yep. these are not defenders. I mean, you're asking Fernandinho to do a job that he is not comfortable doing. And, and while Pep Guardiola may say, well, no, he's, he's done a good job for it. No, he has different tendencies and different instincts as a player. And so, and whoever is playing alongside him, whether that's Otamendi or whether that's John Stones or whether whoever they put it right next to him, those guys are not in a position now to be the best version of themselves either because, well, they haven't shown to be good enough. Ayotamendi, at the latter part of his career, John Stones were still waiting. And so it just doesn't feel like Manchester City can truly defend. So their best defense is their ability to control the game with their possession. And if they're dynamic in their possession and there's place interchange and you're isolating Arsenal in, in 1v1 situations and you're isolating Arsenal in 3v2s where you have that advantage, then Arsenal will be too worried and too concerned with defending to trouble you on the other half. That's the way Manchester City has to keep other teams away from their defensive half. Because whenever anybody, and I'm talking anybody, gets on the attack in half against Manchester City, they have an opportunity because these guys in numbers cannot defend and individually cannot defend. What's the best type of game plan that Freddie Lundberg can come up with? Is it a high press or what is it to try and limit City's quality possession? Well, you can try to cry the midfield, but then you have to have guys that are willing to do that work, that are willing to get close and tie to people. Because you don't have that personnel, and because you've also spoken about the fact that the most important thing that you need as Arsenal is to have confidence, that right now confidence is very low in the team. If I'm Freddie Lundberg, I say, you know what, I'm not going to be sitting here too long. So I don't have the personnel to just sit back. So I'm going to go attack Manchester City. I'm going to try to see if my best, and my best is in the attack, I'm going to see if my best against their worst is going to keep them from attacking us nearly as much as they would. I'm going to make them uncomfortable, I'm going to get after them, I'm going to make it an open game, I'm going to take some goals, but maybe we score more than they do. Maybe that's the best way to go because, oh, oh by the way, what do you have to lose if you're Freddie Lundberg? You're just going to sit there and, and wait until the next manager comes in and say, you know what, if we're going to go down, at the very least, we're going to get after somebody. We're not just going to sit here, let's get after somebody. Finally, I want to get your take on the situation Pep Guardiola finds himself in right now because there's been a lot of mumblings and whatever else. Is it a case of no smoke without fire here? Is there a chance that there's admiring glances from elsewhere or he might be thinking about what's next or is someone just mischief making? Well, I'm, I'm assuming the mischief makers are also trying to flirt with Pep Guardiola. And, and if that flirtation is going on, fine, so be it. It's part of this sport and it's part of the profession. Mm -hmm. But before we kind of seal the fate of uh, Pep Guardiola and Manchester City, let's see what they do in Champions League. And that's still to be decided, that's still to be defined, and that may just be the impetus for Pep Guardiola to make a decision one way or the other. Maybe he looks at as Champions League and Manchester City look at Champions League as the ultimate defining uh, moment for them this season. The league is gone, yeah. so now focus on what you can control. What you can control is Champions League. City win this one? 
at Arsenal. City, City win this one and they do so comfortably. There you go. Thanks so much for watching ESPN on YouTube. And for more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for premium content and live streaming, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.